What's up guys? Uh, before we get into the video of this brand new Matthews here, I wanna let you guys know that we finally have Inside Out Precision merchandise available. So if you scroll down from this video between the title and the comment section, you will see a bar. And there's all sorts of hoodies, tank tops, uh, coffee mugs, phone covers, um, lots of different stuff that you can purchase with Inside Out logos on it. Uh, I hate being a plug guy, but I guess this is kind of the nature of the beast. Um, people have been asking for merch for a long time. We finally have some. Uh, it's really nice quality stuff too. Uh, I actually, we got a couple samples. I don't know why I didn't wear one tonight, um, but they're like a, you know, 60% polyester cotton blend, so they're not gonna shrink up. Um, they're nicely cut. They're not as wide as they are long. Uh, they're a nice, nice shirt, nice hoodie, all of the above. So if you wanna support the channel, and you like the logos, check that out. Um, now, without further ado, let's get into this. What's up guys, welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Uh, today we are going to review two new bows from Matthews. Uh, they just dropped these two or three days ago. This is the TRX 38, and then I have the TRX 34 as well. Um, now, they're not gonna drop their new hunting models until sometime in November, but I have to believe that we're one of the first shops to get our hands on these. Uh, they came out, we got them literally before they were even announced on their website. So I wanted to get a, a review up as soon as possible. Um, so this is definitely in the target lineup. Uh, both the 34 and the 38 are technically in their target lineup. Although there's some cool features on the 34 that I'll get into after the 38 that would make it a really great crossover bow. Um, so getting into the, the technical side of things on this bow. Obviously it is 38 inches, axle to axle. They've had a TRX 38 before, uh, but this is a different riser configuration and design and also has the CX3 cam, uh, which is different than the original TRX 38. Uh, last year they came out with the 40 and the 36 uh, with this, this, I think it's, yeah, the C3X cam. And um, this, New 38, they call it the G2 for second generation or generation two. Uh, and this has the same cam that the 40 and 36 has on it. And I'll get into those differences in a minute. Uh, so 38 inches axle to axle. This has a seven inch brace height. So very forgiving um, as a target bow while still maintaining pretty good speed. Um, comes in at 4.87 pounds. Let me double check my, yep, 4.87 pounds. Uh, this will go from 25 all the way out to 31 and a half inches. So for those of you who want a target bow, uh, but you have a short draw length, this will do it. If you have a long draw length, this will do it. Um, so huge range of, of draw length adjustment there. Um, really what's different about this, like I said, is, is in the cams. Um, this cam is higher performance. It's gonna put out a little more speed pound for pound than the cam that was on the original TRX 38. and. Um, last year when they came out with the 40 and the 36, there were a lot of guys that still just liked the feel of the 38. For whatever reason, whether it was the string angle or just the way the bow held, you know, the 40 felt like a little too much bow for him. The 36 having only a six and a half inch brace height, you know, wasn't quite as forgiving as they wanted. So they wanted that 38 inch platform, but they wanted the, the CX3 cam. Uh, last year, they only offered this cam in a 70% let off, a 70V% let off, which was still 70%, but had a little more valley in it, and then an 80% mod. This year, they've actually upgraded the options on that. So you can still get, they've actually done away with the 70 because pretty much nobody shot that. It was just way too much effort. Um, but they have the 70V, now a 75% mod, which I think is going to be very, very popular. I'm sure they did that because of their professional shooters that wanted just a little more valley there. They didn't have to be quite as aggressive. Uh, and they still have the 80% mod. Now, this bow IBOs at, uh, what does it say? Yeah, 329 feet per second. So 329 feet per second, that is with the 80% let off mods. Now. I'm not really sure why Matthews actually gets faster with higher let off. Uh, I'd like to talk to my rep about that because most bows, when you decrease the let off, you increase the speed. Uh, but this will IBO up to 329 with the, uh, the 80% and 324 with the 70V mods. So it's no slouch on speed. Um, obviously, like I said, this is a target bow, so speed is not a huge concern. 
um, unless you're doing unknown 3D, you know, this is, this is a spot pounder right here. This is gonna be a very popular bow for the known pro ASA tour, all the USA archery stuff, you know, any, any known distance shooting, this is gonna be an absolute hammer. Um, so getting into like the, the design of it, it has the same riser configuration as the TRX 40, meaning, so the TRX 40 also had a seven inch brace height. It's just two inches longer. Um, the riser geometry is the same though, meaning there's the same amount of reflex in the riser, which is the distance from essentially the end of the shelf here to the end of the limb tip. And generally speaking, lower, th this is how you get a larger brace height, generally speaking, is a, a bow with a higher brace height generally has less reflex or less you know, curve from, from front to back. Um, and what that really does for you is it'll, it, the same amount of grip pressure will torque the bow less. So that's really what makes it a little more forgiving um, is the, the mistakes that you make don't punish you as much. Um, so this has, like I said, the same specs in terms of brace height as the TRX 40. It's just two inches shorter. Um, and I know you're thinking that's probably not a big deal, but for guys that shoot outside a lot, you know, any extra surface area on your riser, especially if it's windy, is gonna, gonna cause that pin to float a little more. Um, so they just took the TRX 40 and shrank it down a little bit, basically. Um, I think this is gonna be an extremely popular bow. Had they had this last year, I probably would have got this over the 36. Um, I've been shooting the TRX 36, uh, which I have a review on if you haven't seen it, go look at it. Um, but I've been shooting it for the last year and I, and I love it. I mean, it's, it makes a great outdoor bow. It's whole, it holds its own on indoor. It doesn't hold as well as the 40. Um, but I kind of wanted to just spend the money on one bow that I could do both with, and so I went with the 36. Now, the 40 has kind of edged out the 36 when you look among you know, guys that shoot a lot and, and compete, the 40 seems to kind of be the choice, just because it aims that much better. Um, so the 38 is gonna be kind of a nice amalgamation between the two. Uh, still has the engaged grip on it, which to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this grip. I like the angle and everything, but it's kind of rounded on the back and I just, you know, in my opinion, Matthews is, that's always been their struggle is finding a really comfortable grip. Uh, that being said, they do still have the side plate option, which I ran for a long time, or you can run uh, an aftermarket grip. And, you know, just a little plug here, I've been running the Ultraview Be Real grip um, that Chris B designed with Ultraview, and I love it. They also have other grips where you can actually change out the angle of the grip. So you can shoot, if you shoot a little more high wrist, you can have the high, medium wrist, medium, low wrist, low. Um, and they fit the Matthews perfectly. So that's definitely an option for you. That being said, they do stick off the riser a little bit more. So you might need to lengthen your draw length just a little bit, take a couple twists out of your strings to get it to feel the same. Um, but I really like those, those aftermarket grips. Um, I know this group grip is designed to not induce any torque. And if you've got a really consistent grip, I think that's the case. But for me, I just like a really defined edge flat back on a grip. Um, tells me if I'm not in there or if I am. So, so that's pretty much the 38. Like I said, it's, it's gonna do, it's that 38 inch platform that was so popular two years ago, but they've, they've put the new CX-3 cams on it, um, changed the riser to design a little bit, and I think it's gonna be probably the best seller this season. So that brings me to their other bow, new bow, which is the TRX-34. Um, this bow really caught my eye when it first came out. So, or when it first came out, like two days ago. Um, the reason for that is because I personally, I like a little longer to axle axle bow, um, whether it's for hunting or, you know, 3D or target or whatever. And at 34 inches, this bow kind of fits the bill. Um, if you're looking for a bow, that's going to be an awesome hunting bow, as well as something that you can, you know, put some target gear on and do indoor and outdoor and you know 3D and field and whatever you wanna do, this bow will literally do it all. Um, so apart from the, the uh, axle to axle difference, it's also a tenth of a pound less. So this comes in at four point, or excuse me, two tenths of a pound less. This is 4.67 pounds total weight. Uh, it also has a six and a half inch brace height and that's due to a little more reflex in the riser here than the 38 has. Uh, what that does is it's gonna get you a few more feet per second. So with the 80% mods, this is gonna be at 334, 
With the 70 V's, you're gonna come in right at 330. Um, for an outdoor bow, you know, especially if you're doing like unknown 3D, that extra four or five feet a second, or you know, eight feet a second can can actually really help. Um, you know, if I'm if I'm let's say an eighth of an inch low, I misjudge the yardage by a yard and a half. I'm an eighth of an eighth of an inch low out of the 12 ring with the 38. Those extra feet per second with the 34 might catch the line for me. Um, again, it's got the same cam system, so the CX3. Everything spec-wise on this bow is the same as the 36. So the 38 and the 40 are the same spec-wise in terms of like brace height. Um, and the 34 and the 36 are the same wise, same in terms of brace height. So six and a half inch brace height. Um, basically a spit and image of the 36, just an inch shorter on either side. Uh, this would be a bow that you can hunt with. They even offer it in the ambush green color, which they do not offer the other target models in. Um, because I think they know that guys are going to want this as kind of a do-it-all bow. It's a hunting bow, it's an indoor bow, it's an outdoor target bow. Anything you want it to do, this bow will, uh, will deliver. Um, has the same options in terms of let off. So I can get the 70 Vs, I can now get the 75% mods, and I can get the 80% mods. Now, on that note, the 75% mods, they will fit on last year's TRX-40 and TRX-36. I think I'm gonna order some for myself. Um, I shot the 80s at first, when I first got the TRX-36, and it was just a little, little too, not, not quite enough holding weight. The 70 Vs, it's, it's a fairly aggressive cam. I mean, there's, there's even with the, the V, the valley, there's not a big valley there. It's definitely gonna keep you honest, um, which I like, but I think the 75s will just give me that little bit of extra relaxed feeling that I'm looking for, kind of that that clunk, that click in, as opposed to the 70 Vs, like the 70 Vs kind of kind of feel it start to roll over and then it just stops. There's like, it just don't, and you're at the back wall. There's, there's not that, that roll into the back valley, which depending on your shooting style, you know, people prefer different things. Um, but at least now you have the options to do so. Um, and I think that's, I think that's going to be a big selling point for a lot of target archers out there. Um, like I said, everybody's got a different style of shooting. I really don't know anybody that was using the 70% mods before, so I'm kind of glad they got rid of those and and you know basically just redesigned it with the 75% let off. Um, like I said, it's got the same riser as the TRX 36, but it's just two inches shorter. Now, at 334, obviously it's no slouch on speed. Um, I am kind of curious to see what this cam system will do with like a heavier arrow, you know, for a hunting setup. If you're shooting somewhere in the, you know, 470 to 500 grain range, um, I'm, I'm really curious to see what that'll do. Now, I usually do a speed test. Uh, our chronograph is still broken. We have one on the way, but with COVID and everything, it's taken way too long. Um, just for reference, the, the traverse, which I shoot, is 338, so only four feet a second difference. I wouldn't expect this to be too far off of that. Um, now, one thing I have noticed with this cam system is that it's not so much more aggressive. It's more aggressive, but not so much on the shooter side of things, meaning it's not, it's not a tiring cam to shoot, but it does put more flex into the arrow than, than the cam system was on like the TRX-8, 7, and TRX-38. Um, and what I mean by that is, for example, um, I shot the Halon X, which was the same cam that was on uh, the TRX-38. And with that setup, I had the Pro Comp 380s. Now I, have a, I had a 29 and a half inch draw on that bow. Um, I cut them at like 27 and a quarter, like they were just barely over my rest. Um, but they shot extremely well and, and they were a little bit lighter, got to the target faster. So for an outdoor setup, I, I really liked that. When I got my TRX-36, all the specs were the same in terms of like draw length and draw weight, uh, but those 380s, even cut as short as they were, were just too weak. Uh, when I got out to 50 or 60 yards, I just had these kind of little horizontal groups, and generally that's the sign of an arrow spine that's too weak. So I ordered some 340s for it, cut them at like 28 inches, actually like 28 and a quarter inches, which I don't think that quarter inch did anything, that's just where I ended up with them, uh, and they grew amazing. So. This cam system is a little more aggressive than its predecessor. Um, and so keep that in mind if you're you know, building arrows uh, while shooting one of these. So 
I guess to wrap it up, you know, I think this is going to be a very popular system this year. For those guys, especially out west here, where longer shots are a little more common, they want a bow that holds really well. You know, if you have a TRX 38 as your target bow and a TRX 34 as your hunting bow, you're hardly going to feel any discrepancy or difference moving back and forth between the two. Um, they're going to, you know, sit string angle, obviously on this is going to be a little bit steeper, but you can play around with your loop length and you should be able to get it to feel the exact same. So I think it's going to be a really popular bow this year. I'm excited they came out with it. I, I still love my 36. Um, I don't know if I'm going to change to the 38 or the 40 this year. Um, it's hard to justify spending that money for two extra inches for me. Um, but I'm going to play around with one of these things and, and see if the extra money is worth it. So if you have any more questions on this, please feel free to comment below. Uh, hit me up on Instagram at inside underscore out underscore precision. And uh, yeah, until next time, the new, the new hunting bows are going to be coming out. It's October 8th today. We should have the new hunting models in basically 30 days from now. They usually come out that first week in November. Um, we've heard some things. I'm not going to give them up right now, but we're one of their top 10 dealers. So, you know, we, we, we get nice treatment from them. We should have our preview the day that they come out. So stay tuned for that. Uh, in the meantime, as always, precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle and I'll see you on the range.